Welcome to 319 Event Center. I'm your host, Rachel Cahoon, and this is Show Me Chefs. Today, our two chefs will duel it out in our second quarter round episode where they will put their culinary training to the test. Both chefs are battling for a chance to move on to the next round and win the grand prize of $3,000. Now, let's meet our chefs. My name is Kimberly Matney. I'm the executive chef at Lost Signal Brewing Company here in Springfield. The best part about working here is I've been here since kind of the beginning, so I've helped create the menu, I got a brand new kitchen, it's pretty wonderful doing everything I wanted to do. Getting back in the kitchen after being in corporate restaurants for so long, it was a breath of fresh air. It was getting back to my roots and kind of making my soul happy. You get bogged down in corporate life, not getting to be creative, and here I get to be creative. Trying out new things and kind of reinventing the wheel. We're not doing anything out of the ordinary here, but we're making those kind of ordinary dishes extraordinary. What I would say to the competition is, it's kind of a fresh start. Nobody knows me, I don't know anyone here, but you should watch out. I'm very well versed. I also have a pastry degree as well as a savory degree, so I think I could lock down the, the last round where people usually struggle. I'm most excited because I'm the new kid in town. I'm not from Springfield, so getting getting the name out there, getting my name out there, seeing, you know, what happens. I am uh, Daniel Stern, and I am chef de cuisine at CB Social House. Uh, we are a butcher-centric restaurant that focuses on just doing very simple food but executed very well. Uh, we do cured types of meat, whether it be a, a meat spread or say a summer sausage. It's, it's basically a way to preserve meat, but it's something that we do in many different styles. And so I spent some time over on the West Coast getting my culinary education and uh, ended up here. My main goal as a cook is to make great food but also to inspire people. I was very fortunate to be inspired by people and I've always carried that with me, that you know you want to teach people and you want to further the way the community looks at food and, and continue to grow and, and teach people uh, what good food is. Favorite style of cooking is probably just uh, classic French, just using classic French technique to embellish different types of food. It, it echoes throughout all types of cooking. I'm most excited to meet some new people, see some different products that uh, I haven't possibly seen before and just you know have fun with it. That's what I'm excited about. Winning Show Me Chefs would be an absolute feather in my cap. So our first challenge today is the lightning round challenge. You will have 15 minutes to create the perfect dish using the mystery ingredients. The loser of the lightning round will have to cook with a penalty in the entree round. I hope that they're not taking the stoves away. I uh, feel like that's a pretty important thing we need to have, so hopefully it's not the stoves, uh, and hopefully it's not our knives. Are you guys ready to find out what these ingredients are? Let's do it. All right, let's unveil those. I think the anticipation is killing me, so it's one of those, once the ingredients are revealed, I think that I can, you know, I can do almost anything with them. All right, chefs, your first ingredient is Hop Sing Cashew Chicken Sauce Mix, and your next ingredient is Mother's Uncanny Beer. You guys think you can handle that? I think, I think so. so. Okay, chefs. So the ingredients were definitely interesting. Uh, beer and cashew powder, kind of a weird combination, but you know, that's all right. Chefs, your 15 minutes begins now. Man, for a second I didn't even know what I was gonna do. Like, oh, these are strange. So I decided, well, let's just try the beer first. We'll just start with a drink of beer and that'll get you going in the right direction. <laughs> It's not as hoppy as an IPA, which is one beer I have not had, but I knew the characteristics of a pale ale. And chefs, also you have some protein and meat provided by Horman's Meats, pantry provided by Mama Jean's Natural Market, a spice rack provided by Down to Earth Foods, and bread provided by the Artisan Oven. Awesome. 
Now it's time to meet our judges. Our first returning judge is Mel from Urban Roots Farm. Our second judge is season two competitor, Chef DJ from Nona's Cafe. Good to be here. And our returning final head judge is Angela Winathantri, executive chef and general manager here at 319 Event Center. How are you guys doing today? Good. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. How does it feel to be on the other side of, you know, the kitchen? A lot less stressful. <laughs> it's a little more fun seeing it from this side, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I bet. And Mel, you're yeah. returning, so how does it feel to be back? I'm excited. Yeah? This is, this is going to be great. What are you most looking forward to? Um, well, I think just all the different courses. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you're going to have a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Angela? You know, you're always here. I know I'm always here, but it's always a first time. Yeah. There's two brand new chefs, uh, experienced chefs, and I'm excited to taste and see what they do. Yeah. Especially in this quick fire round. All right, well, let's see what these chefs can do. Mm -hmm. Let's do. I like she's using the heads. Yep. Smart girl. <laughs> Chef Daniel, you ever used that uh, cashew chicken mix before? I have not used this particular one, no. <laughs> I am a pastry chef on top of being a savory chef. I'm a certified barbecue pit master, so I can do a lot of things with a lot of different ingredients, so. I just can't believe how calm they are. Maybe they're not. Inside, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Just having the lights beating down on you, you really feel like you're, you're on stage, you know, and it, uh, it, it adds a lot of pressure to it. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. Oh, that's a ton of time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that time was an issue for me, but there's a lot that we do in 15 minutes every day. I see Chef Daniel is really going with a lot of veg vegetables. Yeah. I saw him going for a yellow uh, uh, pepper, I guess, yeah. earlier, and now it's a carrot. And broccoli. And broccoli yeah, and, broccoli. and broccoli. chicken. Chef from La Signal Brewery is going for the seafood aspect of it, I think. I'm curious how they're going to use the uh, mother's uncanny beer to incorporate into this whole mystery basket. Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Mother's Brewing Company, for providing my t-shirt for today's episode. My name is David Soper. I'm the head brewer here. I've been with the company for a little over five years. Jeff Schrag is the single owner here. So I think Jeff's goal in opening Mother's Brewing Company was to interject something into the community that he didn't see yet in this area. He has a large passion for downtown Springfield and uh, craft wine, craft beer, and decided on opening a brewery in downtown Springfield that gave back to the community. Depending on what style of beer we're making, the process can really take anywhere from just a couple of weeks to uh, almost a year or more. One of our more widely known beers would be our winter seasonal, winter grind, uh, which is uh, English dry stout with uh, mud house coffee. Three Blind Mice is a brown ale that we make uh, that's sort of a balance of three different styles. So we sort of tried to take the ideas from those three beers and the attributes that we liked and put them into one beer. We see a lot of success, especially in the food pairing realm with that beer. Uh, it goes well with a broad spectrum of foods. But for us, the best thing about being able to interact with the community is just the opportunity to get out of the building and kind of uh, reap the fruits of our labor. Uh, we've got this nice big backyard that we're able to throw a couple festivals a year. We have a big Oktoberfest in September, and then uh, we also do a big Mother's Day celebration every year. And so we pack the place out and just have a lot of fun. Uh, and that's a fun thing for us to get to do for and with the community. Um, we're able to interject something that makes somebody's, you know, barbecue, their weekend, their birthday party more enjoyable. Now, I assume Chef Kim has good experience at cooking with beer. I think right? so because hey, La she can La Signal <laughs> Brewery, so I'm sure. So the, the standard should be really high. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe a little bit of an advantage because I work with the beer every day. I wouldn't say that we necessarily got uh, really competitive in this one. I think the next round we definitely are both going to be a little more competitive with it. Obviously the time is not a completely a big factor for you guys, is it? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> Chefs, you have five minutes left. Daniel's already got the plates out. 
I felt like I just kind of had to shoot from the hip. I mean, there's there's not a real elaborate presentation you can do with stir fry. I mean, it, it's basically just put it all right there, you know? Uh, so I didn't have a real long-term goal as far as like trying to plate that dish. Chef Daniel, did you use the um, the cashew chicken powder in, in your chicken? Yes, okay. I used it in the chicken. Uh, and I also used uh, a little bit of the uh, uncanny as well. I think that bitterness is gonna add a good flavor. Gotcha. Uh, how did you utilize the, um, the cashew chicken powder in, in the uh, shrimp aspect of it? I mixed it with the beer from Mother's. Just a little bit I see in that pan looks good. Yeah. I think he's charring a lemon. Yeah. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> you shouldn't feel it anymore after all these years in the kitchen. One minute remaining, chefs. Thank you. I'm pretty excited to taste both dishes right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time is up, chefs. Chefs, you were asked to create the perfect dish in 15 minutes using the Hop Sing Cashew Chicken Sauce Mix and the Mother's Uncanny Beer. It's now time for you to present your dishes to the judges. Chef Kim, you will present first. You have in front of you a spicy poached prawn with the cashew and beer mixed together as a sauce and a little sautéed mushroom with some fresh avocado. So I was hoping that the mushroom would pick up some of the earthy notes in the beer and the fat from the avocado would kind of cut through the bitterness of the hops that you get once you cook a beer down. The beer is definitely coming through. The beer is really definitely coming through. I like how it works with the avocado. I like the texture of the mushrooms with it too. The mushrooms sure. are really well done. Mm -hmm. uh, it just has a little nice crunch on it to kind of offset the softness of the avocado. Wow, that shrimp is a little spicy, <laughs> mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a little spicy. The, the cashew chicken sauce was a little sweeter, and once you reduce the beer, it also gets a little sweeter as well. I wanted to do something that was close to two bites that gave you a highlight of the ingredients and the flavors that I wanted, and so I plated it in a certain way where they would get to taste all of those ingredients all at once. One thing, uh, Chef Kim, I don't t taste a lot of the cashew. Um, totally, I think it's hidden a little bit with the beer. It's kind of hard to stand mm -hmm. out, I think mixed with the beer. Yeah. That could be my, part of my problem too, being a brewery chef, you always want to highlight the, <laughs> the beer. Is. I like it. It's a bunch of flavors that I wouldn't have put together at all, but it tastes good. I saw her using an orange at the end, and I honestly think maybe a little more of the orange, a little more citrus would have added, and, and an orange is a sweet citrus, I think that would have added a little bit more of a punch to it. Punch to it. Kind of cut through the beer a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chef Daniel, you may now present your dishes to the judges. So I did a riff on stir fry. Uh, using that cashew chicken powder, I pretty much figured why not just go in the direction it wants you to go um, and just do a stir fry really simply. Uh, I used the powder to season the chicken and the vegetables uh, and then tossed in some of the, the uncanny. Um, I think the citrus and the bitterness uh, definitely helps out and then I just mounted uh, with butter. I think it's just a really simple thing. Uh, and I think it came across pretty clean as well. It, yeah. I think you hit every everything that you just said when I was tasting it, you, you hit every note of it. That's mm -hmm. uh, well done. Chicken's perfectly cooked. Thank you. It's not dry. I like it. It actually makes me feel like I'm eating healthy cashew chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that was the intention. <laughs> and I'm so glad you used all the vegetables into it. I mean, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was, um, didn't have much time to get all the uh, vegetables mm -hmm. nice and soft, but you did a great job on this. Thank and you I very think much. Using that soy sauce into the cashew chicken powder might have brought the flavor up flavor a little bit. A little more into it. Yeah. Good I job on that. This one highlighted the cashew chicken a lot more versus the beer. I don't I don't really have the beer coming out in this one as much as the first dish. Correct. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely taste the cashews more. Mm -hmm. But it's really good. Thank you very much. Good job, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Daniel. Mm -hmm. All right, chefs, it is now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen. So judges, both chefs had two dishes that looked completely different. How did they taste, you know, with the beer and the cashew chicken sauce mix? Chef Kim went with the shrimp, avocado. It was a great idea 
I don't know if she ex executed all the way through. There was probably something left to be done to the dish, for sure. His was a relatively easy dish, but he did it perfectly. It was good. The seasoning of the chicken was really good. It was nice. really good. It's yeah. really nice. It really yeah. was. And the vegetables that he, he used, a wide variety of mm -hmm. uh, you know, vegetables to kind of make that an actual mm -hmm. uh, a stir fry. Mm -hmm. And while you couldn't taste the beer a lot very much in his dish, I feel like that might be why it was so, like the, the meat was still very moist, because you could see that he was cooking yeah, it in the, the meat. So judges, you think we have a winner? I think so. Okay, let's bring the chefs back in. Stay tuned for more Show Me Chefs. Welcome back to the Kitchen Chefs. Judges, do we have a winner for today's lightning round? Yes, we have. <laughs> Chef Daniel, you won the quick fire round. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Chef Daniel. You're the winner of the lightning round. Thank you. Unfortunately, Chef Kim, you will be cooking with a penalty in the entree round. So you may return to your stations. Okay, chefs, for your next round, it is the entree round. We will have 35 minutes to complete the perfect dish using the mystery ingredients in those baskets. Your mystery ingredients include pork chops from Horman Meats Farmer's Market, Mother's Three Blind Mice, tahini from East Wind Nut Butters, and mini watermelons from Mama Jean's. You guys like those ingredients? Interesting. I do. <laughs> you think you can work with it? I think I could figure something out. I think so. Okay. And Chef Kim, since you lost the lightning round, you will have to cook with the penalty in this round. So for your penalty, you will not be able to use the convection oven for the entire round. Okay. Think you can do it? I think I'll be okay. All right, chefs. I was definitely excited. I was glad I didn't have to work without the oven. Chefs, your 35 minutes starts now. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks to one of our sponsors, uh, Mother's Local Brewery, we're tasting uh, some blind mice. Oh. Chef Kim, I mean, not having the oven is not a big deal, is it? If now it were the dessert round, it would be, yeah, but I think I'm okay be. this time. How are you guys going to use the tahini? I'm going to use it in a sauce for the pork chop. Chef Daniel, you seem to come up with a quick idea on your melon. Yes, uh, I think what I want to do is create a, uh, a nice little salad with the watermelon to uh, accompany the pork chop. So I'm going to kind of go in a sort of sweet, savory direction with this. Once I got an idea in my head as far as doing a salad, I just kind of ran with it. I mean, two experienced chefs like you, I mean, this, the ingredients are not that tough, don't you think? It's not that tough, it's just trying to figure out how you're going to put them all together because it's not something that you would normally put together. Well, <laughs> since you said that, so what are you going to put together? I've got an idea, I'm not 100% on it yet. I was a little thrown by the watermelon. I was like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> so I think uh, Chef Kim's just going along with the tahini and the hummus aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It huh? looks like a hummus. <laughs> <laughs> With the tahini, you know, tahini is just sesame paste, so you can do a lot with it. Um, the classic is, is hummus. Looks like a hummus, tastes like a hummus, but it's not really it's a hummus. It's not a hummus. It's not a hummus. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Let's go visit East Wind Butters with Catherine. Hey guys, I'm Catherine. Well, it's another rainy day in the Ozarks, but we're gonna brave the weather and go visit East Wind Community. They're just down the road here, and they supply the nut butters for the show. Let's go check it out. Can you tell me the story of Eastwind Nut Butters? Uh, well, Eastwind Nut Butters uh, was started in 1981 by Eastwind Community, which has been around since 74. Um, and yeah, for over 35 years, uh, they started with peanut butter, now we do peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter, and our tahini. Uh, in the morning, 2,200 pounds of peanuts are roasted, and then we have an afternoon shift, and that is the milling and packaging process. So we mill the butter into either smooth or crunchy, um, and then we have a, a machine that fills jars and caps them, and then we label them and, and put them into boxes and put them on pallets. So our, our tahini is a single ingredient. It's 100% organic sesame seeds, um, and it's a, one of our most popular products. Um, and our organic peanut butter is also a single ingredient. It's 100% U.S. grown organic Valencia peanuts. Eastwood Nut Butter started with a philosophy of simple, natural, you know, wholesome, you know, minimum number of ingredients. So all of our products are two ingredients or less. Like, you know, we stick to the very simple, you know, what works for us, I guess. 
Well, it's been a great day visiting the East Wind community, but now it's time to head back to Springfield. I can't wait to see how the chefs use these products on the show. If you want to try it out yourself, you can order the products from eastwindnutbutters.com. Back to you in the kitchen, Rachel. Are you going to put that honey in your watermelon salad? Uh, actually, I'm going to use it with the sauce for the pork chop. What I'm going to do is I'm cooking down some of this beer with some sugar. I'm going to make a dressing with this uh, beer back here. Been making a salad dressing, even though it has some bitterness to it. Um, I thought the watermelon was going to help that out with the sweetness of the watermelon. I mean, so far I feel good about my food, but you never know what Kim's going to bring to the table. So um, I'm not going to say I'm super confident because it's kind of an X factor going into this, you know. I think Chef Kim likes spicy food. Uh, uh, yep, and I like <laughs> it. I love it. So, Daniel, what else did you put in the dressing with the beer? So there's a little bit of orange juice, uh, some olive oil. Uh, it's really just beer and sugar, other than that. Um, I'm going to try and uh, save some of the flavor of the beer, but try and bring out some of the sweetness of this watermelon. I'm getting hungry. That's a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Chefs, you have 20 minutes left. Both of you guys are not uh, strangers for cooking competitions, are you guys? Uh, I've definitely cooked in, in several competitions. It's something that's always a lot of fun, you know? So you're pretty comfortable just like right now, you're doing it right now, right? I feel pretty good about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Chef Kim, uh, how long have you been a pit master or doing the barbecue or the smoke of meat? I would say seven years, seven, eight years. Oh, wow. So, so you have a lot of experience on that aspect of it. Yeah, too. I ran a barbecue restaurant in Colombia and learned from a pit master. So you've judged barbecue competitions then? I have, yeah. But that was awesome. Chefs, you have 15 minutes left. 15 minutes? I know. What are you going to do for all that time? <laughs> Should we clean? Stop cleaning. I don't clean at my restaurant. I have people that do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not in charge for no reason. So there should be some good flavors in there yep. and a lot of creativity mm -hmm. then. Yeah. You, have, you know, if you have time, if you're sitting around, that means, yeah, it better be good. I think organization helps a lot. Yeah, and you can see these two chefs right here. They yeah. have it in the, like, it's a back, you know, mm -hmm. it's so natural to them. Tell us what you're making there. It's actually a sauce for the pasta. Did you say pasta? I didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming. <laughs> no, I'm confused. What's that you just put in there? It's a whole grain mustard. Uh, yeah. It's hard to tell what's going through the judges' heads based on, you know, because they give you a little bits of information here and there when they're tasting something. I think that they were a little surprised with the different ingredients that were in, like, the pasta sauce and stuff like that. Now, chefs, you guys, you two uh, restaurants have a little competition going, isn't it? A little I bit. I mean, we're kind of similar, so, I mean, there's some healthy competition between the two of us, I think. And I have not been to his restaurant to try. I mean, certainly with them doing barbecue and us being affiliated with City Butcher, I mean, right there in and of itself is a competition, you know? What's that you're putting down there? This is just a quick guacamole. Oh. And Chef Daniel, what are you using kind of for starch on the entree around here? I'm not using a starch at all. I'm going to call my uh, watermelon the starch. In this okay. Time. I'm kind of curious how you uh, fulfill that whole entree plate without a starch. Chefs, you have five minutes left. Chef Kim, what is that? Is it couscous or what kind of a... Uh, is it orzo? orzo? Yes. Okay. It's like a tricolor orzo. Okay. I actually cooked it in the three blind mice beer. Oh. Really? Interesting. Now Chef Kim has another small plate on the side. Kind of curious how she's going to plate. So right now, the plates look beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know what Chef Daniel's plate looks really nice. It does. One minute remaining, chefs. Thirty seconds. I told Chef Daniel I would have drank his other one. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time is up, chefs. Show me, chefs. We'll be right back after this break.
Chefs, you had 35 minutes to create the perfect dish in this entree round using the mystery basket of ingredients. It's now time to present your dishes to the judges. Chef Daniel, you're up first. So uh, what I did is uh, I cooked the pork chop uh, down with uh, a little bit of the uh, mother's beer. Uh, I did this on top of a quick mash of avocado uh, and then created a salad with the uh, watermelon uh, and also a dressing with the beer as well. Uh, you're gonna taste a little bit of the tahini in the background. Uh, and you should also get some sweetness and uh, just some acidity from a little bit of orange and just some salt from the pork chop. So I think it all tied together pretty well. The dressing is very good. Yep. Watermelon's good. I love the avocado on there. It gives it a, it gives the creamy texture to the plate. It really helps kind of, when you put it together, it's really good. I like the avocado, but I don't know if it really fit into this whole dish. I don't know. Yeah, I actually think the avocado does really well with the pork. More I talk, I guess you might have a point there, but I'm gonna keep tasting this and see how mm -hmm. it works out. Definitely taste the tahini in the sauce. I think the pork sat just a little bit too long. It's kind of getting a little dry. Just a tad bit of a um, bitter aftertaste. Yeah. That's from the beer. I think that, that's so. But it was a well prepared dish. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Daniel. Chef Kim, it is now time for you to present your dish to the judges. So I've started the entree round for you with a watermelon caprese salad. So the watermelon is standing in for the tomato. You've got some applewood smoked goat cheese, balsamic, the brown ale, and some fresh herbs. The balsamic and the brown ale, really? I didn't know if it was gonna go together. I had, when I saw you put it, I'm like, hmm. It does go together. It's really nice, really awesome. Very happy flavor. Yeah. And then for the second part of the dish, you have an orzo pasta that is cooked in the brown ale. And then I made a sauce with the tahini, the brown ale, some whole grain mustard, and chickpeas, as well as a little fresh jalapeno. And then the pork chop is just simply pan sauteed. That ground mustard you put in there, that was a class act right there. What goes better with pork than mustard? So. <laughs> really? <laughs> that ozo, when I took that, I tasted mm -hmm. that nice ground oh, yeah. mustard. Some variation of this on this would have really put it together. It's. It's kind of, this part's dry and this part's moist and really good. I think this could use this on it. With the watermelon, I was a little shocked trying to put it into an entree. And cooking watermelon is not something you really want to do. It takes out a lot of the characteristics of the watermelon. And the pork on the edges is a little overcooked because it got butterfly, it's a little thicker. Right. So it's perfect in the middle, it's kind of dry on the edge. Yeah. I feel like maybe a little dry, but I don't know if it's just because the dish itself is slightly dry. Um, I like meat to be really cooked, and I know it shouldn't always. I tend to overcook it, so I can appreciate that. And Chef Kim, before you go, you know, you had a penalty this round, but it didn't affect you at all. <laughs> Which with this basket I was okay with, had it been a big primal cut of meat, or uh, had it even been a penalty for the dessert round, I probably would have been a little more worried, but I think I was okay with the penalty. Well, thank you, Chef Kim. Chefs, it is now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen. So, judges, what do you think of the chefs this round? Great job was done by both of them. Um, it was a tough decision for you to kind of really pick a winner on this round because they both did good, but also at the same time, they could have done a little better on certain aspects of it. I think Chef Kim aimed a little higher as far as uh, difficulty or took a bigger risk on what she was going for there. I, I think that Chef Daniel, he, he kind of played more in his own comfort, um, but I think he executed better than she did on her riskier choices. All right, so it sounds like you guys have a difficult decision here. It is going to be a tough decision. All, All right, right, well, let's bring the chefs back in. Okay. Welcome back to the kitchen, chefs. You have one round to go. That is the dessert round. You will have 25 minutes to complete the perfect dish using the ingredients in your last mystery basket. I, I definitely was glad to have won the first round, and uh, man, hopefully I can get through on the second one, too. I don't wish any ill will on my competitor, but I do hope that he falters in the dessert round. Your mystery ingredients are honey milk from Fromage Blanc from Edgewood Creamery, dark chocolate ginger from Mama Jean's, mother's milk, and Meadowland Farm Eggs. You guys like that? I think I do. I think I can work with us. Yeah. The dark chocolate covered candied ginger, which is a good product. I 
tried not to eat the whole bag while I was cooking. <laughs> Let's go check out Mama Jean's Natural Market. Hi, I'm Diana Hicks and I'm co-owner of Mama Jean's. Not only at Mama Jean's do we provide a full line of grocery items, but some people, you know, don't have time and they like to have food prepared for them. So we branched out last summer in July and we opened MJ's Market in Delhi and that is the fresh prepared food items that are supplied to Mama Jean's from MJ's Market in Delhi. And I mean, there's everything from a sandwich menu, you can get any paninis or, you, or any of our paninis can also be made into a salad. So there's a lot of vegan and vegetarian options, gluten-free. We also have a coffee bar where you can get lattes, cappuccinos, or just regular pressed coffee, and fresh pressed organic juice, and the cold and flu shot that will cure whatever ails you. What I would like people to know most about Mama Jeans is that it is a full line market. You can get everything here that you could ever possibly need. If you want to talk to one of our professionals about uh, any of our supplements, or if you want to sit down in front of a mirror and try some of our facial care products or any of our makeup, then there's room for you to do that now as well. I mean, I think one of the greatest things about Mama Jeans and why people like to shop here is because of our employees. They are very knowledgeable about our products and they are super friendly. Another great thing about Mama Jeans is the customers. We have some of the best, most loyal customers around and we know a lot of them by name. It's just a lot of fun to interact with the people who have the same kind of vision as we do. Chefs, your 25 minutes starts now. Oh, this is exciting. And Rachel just informed them, this is a show me chef's first. Oh, Go good. into the, uh, this is round, the chef's pie. Uh, I think we were both thinking, man, we better bring it on this last round because uh, there's there's no going back. So Daniel, do you do a lot of desserts? I tend to stay more on the savory side of things most of the time, so uh, I can do desserts. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a weakness of mine, um, but it's, it's not what I am, uh, trained in, so to speak. I'm not a, a baker by trade. So Chef Kim, being a pastry chef, you think you have a little upper hand? I feel a little bit. I knew the recipe by heart. I wrote this recipe a few years ago, so, um, and it's one I've made many times. I don't wanna, you know, toot my own horn too much. It's been proven that women have better senses of smell and better palates as well, so maybe that's a little bit of an advantage. Chef Kim, are you making almost kind of a ganache on that? No, this is actually a brownie. Brown? Okay. That's a perfect beer for a brownie, I'll tell right. you. Yep. Mr. Uh, Daniel, you mentioned for bread pudding. I am not going to do bread pudding. Good because for you. Because I feel like uh, Good that's, for you. that's it's, what it's I always been, do. It's overly done. I think they kind of wanted me to play into bread pudding a little bit, but I, I wanted to shy away from that one because it's something we all do. Um, so I wanted to do something a little bit more unique. So I'm gonna do a riff on French toast, actually. I was, I was excited, yeah, because we knew the, the winner from the first round was Daniel. So I knew I had to have beaten him by, I guess, a total of four points for the entree round. So I was a little excited. I think that uh, my use of the beer in multiple ways helped me a little bit in the entree round. Chefs, you have 15 minutes left. I really just got the idea for French toast really, really quickly um, and just, just ran with it, just ran with it and tried to get all the flavors to come together. I'd like to see where French toast gets elevated. Yep. That's what I'm curious to see here. Chef Kim, you, you, and I see what you just did with the ice cream, the beer, and the chocolate ginger. That was actually the fromage blanc. That was the fromage blanc? Yeah, it's going to be the frosting for the brownie. Awesome. The fromage blanc from Edgewood Creamery, which I've had many times. It's a beautiful cheese. Let's go visit Catherine at Edgewood Creamery. We're here with Melissa Fletcher. Her and her husband run Edgewood Creamery. So this wasn't originally a cheese making place, right? In 2001, we moved our dairy farm here, and we've just been basically a dairy farm, grass-based, pasture-based dairy farm since 2001. 2015 is when we opened up the creamery, so we needed a little more income. Uh, and we couldn't really expand the farm uh, cow-wise or land-wise, so we decided that, you know, our milk is really high-quality, good grass-fed milk, and we decided to turn it into a good quality cheese. It takes really good milk, I, I think, to make good cheese. Grass-fed milk, 
there is a difference in the taste. It's just got a really unique, good taste to it. It's just the way a cow needs to be fed. They enjoy grass. <laughs> it's their favorite food. It's amazing to me that what we make here, the chefs actually take and work with that and make them into these delicious dishes. It's exciting to see that happen. We judge on taste, the presentation, and especially how you guys use the mystery ingredients in your dish and also added a different category of difficulty of dish. Are you gonna try to do some chocolate decoration there? A Little bit, something simple. If you'd given me 35 minutes this round, I could have spun some sugar or done something crazy, but. Do we have glasses? So you do want like uh, drinking glasses, wine glasses? Either one's fine. Chefs, you have five minutes left. I think the, what I did put out in the 25 minutes impressed them a little bit um, with the amount of work that went into actually making all of that because it was a two-step process for cooking the brownie. I made a chocolate sauce with the beer. I made a frosting. I also made the beer float, and I think that was something that was different that they had never seen before. I think Chef Kim is trying to get us drunk. Chef Kim's trying to get Chef Kim drunk. <laughs> <laughs> did you make a sauce out of that beer? I did, yes. Two minutes remaining, chefs. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting a little nervous, too. Mm, beer syrup. One minute remaining, chefs. Speaking right at you with all that chocolate. Ooh. <laughs> Chefs, you have 30 seconds left. Make sure you have all of the ingredients on your plate. She did it. Oh gosh, more chocolate. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time is up, chefs. I wish I had put out what I had set to put out and envisioned in my mind. And, you know, maybe with another minute or two, it probably would have happened. But um, I was very happy with what I put out, and I was excited, and I was nervous, and, you know, it was just a gamut of emotions. <laughs> it was a bit of relief, uh, first of all, just being done with all of it. You don't have to think, uh, think about what ingredient's coming next. Um, so you just take a big sigh of relief. Stay tuned for more Show Me Chefs. Okay, chefs, for your last round, it was the dessert round, and you had 25 minutes to create the perfect dish. It's now time for you to present your dishes to the judges. Chef Kim, you will present first. So for the last round, I have made you a MILF Stout Brownie with the Fromage Blanc. The chocolate-covered candy ginger is in the frosting. There's a little bit of chili powder in there as well. And then you have a stout chocolate sauce. And then you also have an Imperial Stout float with the chocolate sauce as well. The brownie is really soft and fluffy. That's the first thing we've got The cheese with the ginger and the chocolate. Very good. Oh, wow. OK. All right, That's all like right. an awesome little Cabernet, really. <laughs> it's, uh... That is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it is different. It's very different when you add the dairy to oh the beer. Goodness. And once you drop that temperature, it brings out a lot of different notes in the beer yeah. that you wouldn't normally get. It's something that I've done many times in different restaurants I've been in um, because it completely changes the flavor when you drop that temperature of the beer so low and uh, add the creaminess of the ice cream to it. So I think that they were a little stunned. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. <laughs> Great job. The float was a very nice touch. I think this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Kim. Thank you. 
Chef Daniel, it's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. So with this dish, I did a riff on French toast. Uh, I made a syrup with the uh, beer, uh, incorporated some sugar and cooked it down a little bit. Uh, so you will have a milk syrup with that. I uh, also incorporated the uh, beer into the actual batter for the French toast as well. Um, and then mixed the, uh, the ginger chocolate with the uh, cheese uh, and a little bit of the beer also. Uh, so I hope it all tied together really well. I was really happy with um, the cohesiveness of everything that I put out today. The plates all looked really well. Um, and I was, I was just happy to be done. Yeah, and I'm surprisingly, when I took that bite, first bite, it's nice and soft. The, the bread is, I thought it was going to be tough. Mm. It's soaked very well, so it's not too mushy. has a nice crust on the outside. Yeah. I like that a lot. Wow, this is also very simple, mm -hmm. great, but I wish you added some kind of a fruit element, some strawberries, some blueberries. It would have made your plate 10 pounds times better looking and taste as well. I love the simplicity of it. It's, it's more rustic looking, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's nice and mm -hmm. rustic looking. No, I get it. I mean, I'm impressed, bro. I would eat this for breakfast yep. any day. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be tough. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Great Thank job. You very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Daniel. Okay, chefs, so it's time for the judges to deliberate your final dish. You may now exit the kitchen. Judges, going into the dessert round, both chefs were neck and neck. Do you think one has a, you know, advantage in this round, or are they still both pretty neck and neck for you guys? I thought mm. Chef Kim might have an edge because she's a patient chef. Yeah. But I think Chef Daniel came out mm -hmm. and presented a great dessert dish as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as flavor, I would go with hers. As far as appearance, his looked better. So judges, do you think we have a winner for today's episode? I think we do. Think so. Okay, let's bring the chefs back in. Okay. Show Me Chefs will be right back after this break. Welcome back to the Kitchen Chefs. After an intense three rounds of cooking, it's finally time to reveal the winner of the quarter round episode. First, Judge Mel, what did you think of Chef Daniel's dishes today? I thought they were all amazing. Uh, starting with the appetizer, um, we kind of saw you using some more fresh ingredients. You were kind of sticking with a technique and, and the flavors that weren't too crazy and wild, but something you felt comfortable with. And you executed that well, I think, because you felt so comfortable. I know we went back and forth about the avocado thing, but I actually enjoyed the avocado with the pork. The dessert, again, you know, nothing too out of this world, but uh, keeping it simple and doing it well. I think you did great. Thank you It very was much. delicious. Thank you. Yeah. Judge DJ, what did you think about Kim's dishes? The appetizer round, the shrimp was really, had a good kick to it. It was just a little overcooked, but the flavors were really good. Your presentation was clean in the entree round. Uh, the pork was a little overcooked, but I loved the flavor of the watermelon and the goat cheese, and the balsamic was fantastic. It's a flavor I'll remember. Um, and the, the mustard and the orzo was really good. Um, and then in the dessert round, you, you swung for the fences, and I think, I think you nailed it. It was really good. Um, I'm impressed with what you did there. I, I've been in your shoes before, and to, you know, bake a cake and do all those elements together and get it all done, and you know, your your allotted time is pretty impressive. So I think you did a great job. Thank you. There's a winner by one point. <laughs> one. Wow. One. Wow. wow. <laughs> Today's Show Me Chef winner, advancing to the semifinal, is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. It was amazing. You're a wonderful chef. I was actually shocked. Daniel was gracious and a formidable competitor, and I think it was the dessert that kind of put it over the top. Congratulations, Chef Kim. You are the winner of today's quarter round episode. Thank you. I was really going back through my last plate in my head over and over and over again. Did I build enough flavor into it? Could I have done something a little bit differently? But like I said, I think, I think the right person uh, got the win today on that. Well, Chef Daniel, we really enjoyed having you on the show today. Thank you very you much. You may now exit the kitchen. Thank you. I thought uh, Kim today was great. She's a lot of fun to work with. I enjoyed myself. I really, really did. Um, it's always cool, like I said, to 
um, try different things, be in a different space when you're cooking. Um, and this really kind of forces you to try things that you wouldn't normally, so I thought it was a lot of fun. How does it feel? It's, uh, it's overwhelming and Daniel's a great technician so it was, it was hard work going up against him. I'm very excited and I've got a lot of work to do and uh, a lot of recipes to read over and things to think about before I come back for the next round. We want to thank you so much for being here today and we'll see you next time on the semifinals. Great, thank you. You may now exit the kitchen. Thank you. I'm Rachel Cahoon here at 319 Event Center. Make sure you tune in next week for our special Lake of the Ozarks quarter round where executive chef Thomas Robinette from the Lodge and Golf Resort at Old Kinderhook battles it out with Chef Joseph from JJ's at the Copper Pot. It's uh, one of those dreams where you open up the basket and there you find a whole squid. Are you kidding me? I wasn't even sure at first. I thought it might be some sort of tuna. You gotta watch for the beak. It's easy to say that from over there.